Hey class, welcome to Introductory Bioinformatics. I'm Dr. Vandenbrink, everyone calls me Dr. VDB. Um, this is an introductory course into the world of bioinformatics. We're gonna be using the R programming language. Uh, R is kind of a simple object-oriented programming language. It's a good way to get your feet wet. Um, if you do go into bioinformatics uh, as a career choice eventually, you'll probably wanna pick up Python um, as well and maybe some other things like SQL or Tableau or, or things of that nature, but we're gonna start very much from the bottom, right? So I expect nothing of you in this course. Um, well, that's not true. I expect you to try to have fun, to learn something. But I expect you to have no prior knowledge coming into this course. We're going to start at the very beginning with our uh, teach you the basics, get you introduced, and then work our way up into doing some actual bioinformatic analysis, some uh, differential gene expression, maybe build some phylogenetic trees, uh, things of that nature. So I hope you enjoy the course. I hope you uh, stick with me and let's get started. Okay, so first thing I want to do is introduce you to our studio. So this is our studio. It's a GUI or graphical user interface that kind of goes over top of R and it makes it a lot uh, easier to manage, makes it a little uh, more user friendly um, and kind of takes the scariness away of the command line. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to close all these previous windows here, um, is we're going to go up to the top and start a new R script. Um, and as you see up here, this is where we're going to put all of our code. Uh, down here is our console and this is where um, it will actually evaluate and run the code. Um, I'm going to erase this here. This is our environment, so this is where all of our variables and, and things that we save um, will be displayed. And then down here we have uh, kind of where our plots, uh, kind of above my picture here, uh, where our plots uh, and things are all going to be shown. Um, we'll get more into that later. So the first thing I wanted to uh, show you is that when we run our code, um, there, it's important to annotate it because you need to know what you're doing. And so in an R script, we can start with a hashtag and then write something and R will look at that hashtag and say, okay, ignore this chunk. Don't try to run it as some sort of formula. Um, this is just notes. And so we're going to start by saying, uh, annotate in our code, our, our script here and say simple uh, operations. And so below that, we're going to kind of do a double hashtag. It's kind of like an indentation. We're going to say, this is how R uh, does addition. And we're going to put, you can put whatever numbers you want here. So I'm going to do uh, 12 plus, oops, I'll put a plus there, uh, six. And if I go up to the top right here and I click run, we see that down in the console where it actually runs the code, uh, we get 18. And now if uh, I were to select everything, the whole script, and click run, you see it still says 18. It does not uh, run, it, like it, well, it shows our annotation here, but it doesn't try to evaluate it. Now if I were to take away these hashtags, we see we get a change in color here, uh, depending on what, uh, um, appearance you chose so if, if you're interested you can go to global options and change the appearance I like it a little darker because it kind of saves on my old eyes uh, and so we're staring at a bright white screen um, so in my case it turns white here um, now if I were to select this and run the entire code we get an error it says this, uh, there's an unexpected symbol and this is so it's trying to run this as actual code and not notes so I put those hashtags back you can put one or two just depends on how uh, nice and neat you want the code to look. Um, so yeah, so that's addition. Um, so let's make another note here. This is how R does subtraction. And so if we were to put uh, 12 minus 6 and on that line, we get 6. So it does that very well for us. Now if we were to select the whole thing and hit run again, it will run both. So Let's, so if you hit Control L, it'll clear your terminal. Um, so I'm gonna do this so it makes it a little easier to see. So you see it runs both of these codes, okay? So now, um, let's talk a little bit about 
uh, variables. So kind of like algebra, um, a variable is a way to like store a number in a variable or a, a letter or a name or something like that. Um, so let's annotate our code and say, this is how we store uh, data as variables. Um, we are going to store the names of the week for this current example. Um, and you can, if you want to type it up, um, I can hit enter and then put more hashtags to have it on another line. You can kind of see like the end of the page if you were to print this off here. Um, so, Let's do days. That's going to be the name of our variable. We're going to draw an arrow. So we're saying everything on the right hand side or over here is going to be stored into days. And so uh, we're going to put C, which is like a collection. And we're going to say Monday, Tuesday. Oops. We have to put. Uh, if we want these to be words and not numbers, we have to put quotation marks around them. Um, so that's why I'm putting them in quotes. Um, oops, Thursday. You'll see after all this that I am not, uh, you know, the perfect typer, um, especially when I know that there's going to be people watching. Saturday and then uh, Sunday. Okay, so now. With this, if I were to run it, you see that down here, it just says the code again. And up in the uh, top right in our environment, you see that now days has been saved here. And it says it's uh, a collection of characters. So not numbers, but words or characters. And there's seven entries, one through seven. And you can kind of see the beginning here um, that Monday is listed. So now, um, we can subset and figure out, um, pull different things from this uh, collection uh, of stored values. So let's make a note here and let's say, uh, let's find the fifth entry in our stored collection. And so what I can do is I can type days, which is our, um, our variable that is storing these uh, the names of the days of the week. And then I can do these um, kind of straight brackets, um, the not curly brackets, and put five. And so when I do that and I click run, you see that it pulls the fifth day. So if we look at our um, days variable, one, two, three, four, five. Friday is the fifth day. So when we say days pull the fifth entry, it pulls out Friday. Um, you can also um, pull out a range. So let's pull out a, a range of entries. And so we'll say days and we'll do the brackets and we'll do, let's do the first three days. So one through three of the week. So if we hit run, we get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Perfect. Just like up here, the first three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. All right. So. Let's pull out the, um, the end of the week. So let's do days again. Boom. Let's do the fifth through seventh uh, days of the week. Let's click run. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Perfect. Um, you can also select specific days. So right now we know how to select just the fifth day, a range at the beginning, a range at the end. But say we want to do something like um, uh, pull out the every other day, right? So we'll do a collection again and put curly brackets. So um, this is a function that um, is saying create a collection or this is a collection of what we're asking. Um, so we'll do curly brackets there. There are, sorry, uh, parentheses there. And we'll do the one three, five, and seventh day of the week. And so if we run that now, we get Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So Monday the first, third, fifth, and seventh entry. Um, okay, so what we can also do is we can take a subset 
out of days, so like the fifth through seventh day or the first through third day or the odd days of the week, and we can store that into another variable. So in this case, let's do, um, let's subset our days, oops, variable, and create weekdays. So what we'll do is we'll create a new uh, variable called weekdays, and we will put an arrow pointing towards, to say everything that we pull on the right-hand side is going into weekdays. And so we'll say days, and we'll do one through five, because those are the weekdays, right? Saturday and Sunday are variables six and seven. So we will run this code, boom. And now, if we are to just call weekdays, run it. You see it pulls Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, so if you want to call a variable to see what's in it, you can just run the name of the variable. Alternatively, you can say print uh, weekdays and run that and it does the same thing. Okay, so that's kind of uh, our brief uh, introduction into variables. Um, I'm going to keep it basic on your very first one. Um, so when you're done with this, make sure that you save this R file. Um, you can save it wherever you want, we'll, under whatever you want. I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this uh, by, uh, informatics R. We're going to hop in here and then I'm going to, uh, throughout this course, we're just going to be continually adding to this R script. Um, so you only have to save uh, one file, you might want to make copies if you're afraid you're going to lose it. Um, but I'm going to put the, call this my bioinformatics handbook. And hit save. And so that should be saved. Um, and so that's your introduction to variables. Um, I hope that you stick with this class. Um, I think it's uh, a very beneficial skill that you'll be able to whether you're going to med school, whether you're going into research, it's very desirable. Um, you can kind of just Google around, uh, look on monster.com or whatever these job boards are, and look for data scientists or bioinformaticians or computational biologists, and there is a lot of people um, looking to hire people with these skills. So that's all I got for variables. I'll see you in the next lecture.